this, this. Just a minute. Uh, I'm sorry, see guys, this. I, I just started this the can... recording. I, I started the recording. I was supposed to do it earlier, but I forgot. I had problems because I couldn't hear. I finally got that resolved, okay? But anyway, I'm recording this to be a tool for you guys and for Simone to listen to and for us to observe to help you guys more. So I just want to let you know why I started recording. That's okay, great. thank you. I, I understand your question, Zavalter, and it's a very important one as well. Like, of course, for me, I had the chance to move abroad. And when you are abroad, you are surrounded by all this language. You see everywhere you turn, you you hearing English, you turn the TV, you turn the right radio on, you're talking to your colleagues, you're in the bus, everywhere it's English. Of course, you guys don't have the, this opportunity at the moment. Be only with people, you don't have this opportunity. However, mm -hmm. you do have Netflix. You have podcasts, you have movies, you have so many tools at the moment that you can use. And it doesn't have to be the whole day, but you have to be, you have to have a structure, you know, you have to be firm and strict to yourself. You're going to say every day for one hour, I will take the time and I'm going to listen to a podcast. 15 minutes, half an hour, one hour, I'm going to do it. So you do that. There's also TV. You're going to do that as well. You can read books for yourself. It doesn't have to be long. You just take one page. Take the book. Yeah, I'm going to show you, but this one is the Dutch one. You just open a page and you just go. I can read like a little sentence in Dutch for you. So you just hear your voice and it's going to get better. And that betreffs evenings the smerig leugen over the COVID injections. Want he is the father van der Leuge and the Moldenaar van de Beginne. You know what I mean? You don't understand what I'm saying, but it doesn't matter. I change the way I speak because I'm speaking another language. If my if I, my husband is here, by the way, if I call him later on, we're gonna talk like for two minutes, you will see that the way I speak is completely different. When I'm gonna speak Portuguese to you guys, sometime, someday, it's different. So that's also important everybody has an accent so that's not about it it's just the way you start communicating and the best way to start getting english in your head is by talking to yourself so you just go you wake up and you go mm, in english in your head mm, i'm hungry what am i gonna eat today okay if i get up i'm gonna take a shower oh no no should i go eat this oh I don't feel like sweets. Oh, should I go for eggs? You know what I mean? Easy, basic, stupid things, but you use your brain with the language. I told you guys already, I speak five languages and I switch from one to the other, no problem at all. With all the languages, the same methods. You just start thinking. At the moment, my mind is in Dutch, you know, because I work, I live here, I speak Dutch with my children. But as I said, I switch from one language to the other, just like this. It's, it's, my my brain just finds a way to <laughs> to locate the language. It's there somewhere. So it just go like this, and I go from one to the other. But you it's just practice as well. It's just practice, and and you start with yourself. You know, you just go, and you start. Oh, should I call my friends? Oh, what should I tell him? Oh, yes, I'm going to, you know, just little things. Just do exercises like half an hour a day as well. And you're going to go for sure. You're gonna, it's going to get better. Okay. Do you do anything, Zavalter? Yeah, I try. Uh, I try to do exactly what you say. Yes, we're saying. Uh, try to to. To, to, to say in my mind some little phrase during the day as yes, when I am uh, walking on the street and uh, day by day I feel that uh, I'm I am better in thinking without translating but but of course uh, a lot of time I think I I have to translate yet yes but uh, it's a process it's there a you process. Go. 
And mm -hmm. uh, we have to have their, uh, pa their patience with us. If I don't have patience with me, I will give up fast. Yes. That's and for it, sure. is a, it is a life process. Yes. What, so what I, you all have yes. to understand is we are all in the same boat. Even yes. even native speakers, they struggle with this or that, and they don't know this, they don't know that. You, you guys know about this uh, level thing in English? They call A1, A2, B1, B2. You know that? Yeah. I mean, if I, if I was going to ask you guys, which level do you guys think I am? On this English uh, A, B, C, whatever. What do you think, Zevalter? Angela wrote C2. But what do you think? Do you know about that or not? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think you are you are advanced. Uh, yes, that is that uh, you are asking me? Yeah, that's what, my question. What, what, but what but you level? see, like, anybody else would like to answer via the chats, maybe? No? Okay. So... Actually, I don't have a C2 level at all. I, I, I don't have the level. And most of Americans, because I talk about Americans because I know Brazilians, they are crazy about Americans. They love the American accent. And, oh, America, Hollywood. It's also because of the movies, the TV series. There's too much that, that the Brazilians, they have to put exposure explosion you know what i mean there's too much of america in brazil the rest of the words you guys don't know much i'm saying you guys because i'm a little bit different on that respect when i moved to belgium i didn't even know where belgium was i had no idea which language they spoke here what these people, who they looked like, what they did. I didn't know anything. So that's why I mean you guys. Because when I was in Brazil, everything was the United States. Oh, America, America. Oh, the Americans. Oh, but it's, it, it's, not, it's not everything. You know what I mean? So coming back to the C2 to C1, maybe I speak as a C2 because all the Americans, they have a C2. But if you're going to test them, some of them, they have B2. And maybe I'm a B2 as well. You know what I mean? So that's, mm -hmm. that's also something that is important to know and to realize what you guys want from this. We're going to start working together. What is your goal? You guys want to go to university? You, wanna, you guys want to have a C2 level? You want to have papers, certificates? Or you just want to be able to communicate to get better in speaking? There's two different things. I think maybe I am a B2, C1, but I'm definitely not a C2 because my vocabulary is not that high expense. You know, it's okay. I speak, I speak really basic. I have lots of vocabulary, okay, but I don't speak that fancy. Believe me, it's just the way I communicate that's a, a little bit like I changed, you know, a little bit. Brazilians, we speak with the nose. And the American... No, Bruce, no, no. Bruce, it's a nas na uh, nasal sound. Nasal, nasal sound. Help us out. So, no, my boy, my boy, okay? That's, that's, how, I, that's how I express it, because it has that nasal sound. In the there English, we don't have this. We don't have this in English. You see? That's a very good tip as well. You have yeah. to understand that every language that we speak, Dutch, we go like... <laughs> when I start learning, I had, I had like truth, truth, bank, uh, truth ache the whole time. Because I couldn't speak it. It's just like, ah. So when I speak it, it's completely different. I have to change like the way I use my like my mouth, my my tongue, the way I, I, I use my nose. And with English, it's pretty much the same. Bruce, can you el elaborate a little bit on this no, as an American for them? Just that, you know, we all know, because we've been doing this for a while now with, with English, 
that there are different sounds and we have to practice them um, until they become more fluent. So the word São, São Paulo. I don't say it. I say São Paulo. It doesn't exist in English, right? No. And the, the TH doesn't exist in Portuguese. The. <laughs> okay. So there you go. That's a good exercise. Every morning. <laughs> 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 it's okay. funny, but I had the same in Spanish. When I was learning Spanish, when I was little, I was the oh, I was every morning like <laughs> because we don't have that in Portuguese. So I was like <laughs> So now I speak Spanish like I'm a Peruvian because I lived in Lima before. So you know what I mean? So that that's how it goes. Anyhow, let's go to Ludmila now because she's a bit quiet. Yeah, yeah Ludmila, say something. Oh, you can say anything you want, but uh, Mateo's put a question there if you want to use that. Uh, so, Simone, just, just I'm sorry, excuse me, but the, there is a question on the on the on the chat window uh, from Mateus to you. Yes, I saw that. Mateus, I will definitely get back to you, but I just want to give priority to the three uh, chosen ones. After this one hour, when we finish, we will talk about what the guys thought about this uh, this hour. And then we're gonna get to the questions. You guys can also talk a little bit. I'm not doing this strict to the hour, you know? Let's just try to Luch keep this going this one hour. And then we're gonna go back to what you guys would like to change or what you guys think is interesting. Anyhow, Ludmila, let's go. Yeah, uh, you told us you went to Canada. It was a exchange program. Um, as a matter of fact, it was not. I went to Canada just to learn English. So I went to, to school, as I said. I went from nine to five. Every day of the week, and I had the weekends off. So it's like four months when I arrived at school. It's called LSC. You, can, you guys can go, Google it. LSC Toronto, they have different schools in Canada. I think in, in Vancouver, they have another one. But anyway, it's been like 25 years, but that's what I did. I begged my parents to send me away. So this, I chose what I wanted to go. And the reason why I chose Canada back then was because I didn't want to be like everybody else. United States, America, United States. That was first reason. Second reason, Toronto is very close to New York, so they have pretty much the same accent, so it was not a big deal on that either. And the third, the, Amer the Canadian dollars back then in 1999 was lower than American uh, dollars, so I could spend more money. <laughs> the money that I didn't have, anyhow. So anyway, um, there was... Um, when I started the school, they tested me. So I, I got, uh, to, on, I started right away on level seven and they have until level 10. So I complete the, um, all the course in four months. So each month I was improving from, uh, from levels and it was only English. Your question was a little bit short, but I will explain you guys more about how I got to this level of English. So my life, it was like this. From zero to 18 in Sao Paulo, nothing else, just Brazil, Portuguese. At the same time, I was learning English and Spanish uh, through CNA. Does it still exist, this school there? Do you know this school called yes. CNA? Yes. Yes. I know. Okay. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I went to, I was studying uh, English twice a week, Spanish twice a week in this school um, for years. So when I, I arrived in Canada, I had level seven and then I went to 10. So I finished. But then I went back to Brazil, Sao Paulo. I only lived in Sao Paulo, in Brazil. That was it. And I was going to university. I have a bachelor in tourism, right? So I finished my degree for four years. However, 
during these four years, I was allowed to leave three times, four of them. The first one, I went to Canada in Toronto. Then I went back to, to Brazil. During my studies, I got an internship. Internship is different than exchange mm -hmm. students program. So I went to Disney World, you know, in Orlando. I worked there during the summer for five months. And there was lots of Brazilians there. And I thought, you know, I thought after spending four or five months in Canada and I had level 10, I thought, oh, I got the job at Disney. I'm so amazing. My English is great. I had so many seminaries that I didn't understand anything. I couldn't follow. I was just this stupid girl in the room. I couldn't understand shit what they were saying. Okay, but I had to work in the restaurants. And then it was okay, you know, to take orders. Can I have a Coke, please? Oh yeah, give me the hamburger or just give me number five. That is a package deal, you know? So then I finished that and I was amazed with America, of course, because it's not only the United States. You have to see, you know, I was like 19 years old. I was working for Disney and it's magical. Like everybody say, you know, like it's really magical. So I had the best time ever and I wanted to go back. I didn't want to stay in Brazil. I was just like, oh, I'm going to go back to my life there. It's so boring. I had to study. So I had to promise my parents that I was going to get a degree, you know. So I applied for another internship in Montana. Vanderlei, do you know Montana? A state in the United States? Oh, I don't hear him. Anyhow, there's another opportunity yes. that I get. Oh, you do? Yes, I had family that lived there at one time and oh, really? I was able to visit one time. It's very cold and very beautiful. And but for a Brazilian, can you imagine for a Brazilian? I was there in the winter time and oh it was goodness. awful, the weather. Oh my gosh, but it was beautiful. So it was again another amazing, really unforgettable experience that I had. So again, five months, I did that. And I thought, oh my gosh, girl, now you got it. Your English, it's going to be, you know, you're going to be better than whoever. But it was not. Again, I was just like, how is it possible, you know? After having all these opportunities, you know, working abroad in the USA, in Canada, and it's still, my English was not that great. And so I was just like, there's something wrong with me. How is it possible? Then I went back to Sao Paulo because my internship finished. So I had to go back. I was studying in Portuguese, of course, for my major. And I say, I have to leave again. I, I don't want to stay here. So I left again. I went to Peru where I took three months. Again, very intensive. Mm -hmm um Spanish course so I got also from the University of Lima La Universidad Católica de Lima I have a certificate I have a diploma the, the highest level of Spanish so that was also my goal and I got it so I was again traveling abroad so I met so many people and lovely people of course the Peruvians are great they are also like Brazilians they don't speak that great English in general, but there are many people who will try, you know, who study, they want to learn, they want to learn English, they love Brazil as well, they want to live also in Brazil if they have the chance, so that's how it is, Lutimila, you see, you, it's not just saying, oh, I'm going to go once and I'm going to be the best speaker ever, no, you have to practice, girl, how about you, do you have dreams to go abroad? 
Yeah, I do. Maybe in the future, probably. But I'm not thinking about uh, studying or working, at least not nowadays. But who knows? <laughs> And the other question that I have to you, because the first one was pretty short, I was going to ask you uh, in Canada, what was your biggest challenge there? It was the language, it was the culture, I don't know, it was the weather. I think in Canada, it's very interesting, a question, because it comes back to my story, because I was not finished, you know? <laughs> So after Peru, I have to, to go back to this story, to go back to your question, as a matter of fact. So I was in Peru. I did my thing there. I got a certificate. I went back to Brazil, right? But this whole time, I kept in touch with a boy in Toronto that I fell in love with back then. So we kept in touch. I was like, oh, I love you so much. He told me, oh, I love you too. We have to see each other, but we never saw each other after that. Mm. But then I finished my degree and I was just like, you know what? I'm not going to stay here. I have to go. My parents, they were like bananas. Do you do you know what I mean? with they were, they, they, were, they couldn't understand. They were so upset. They're just like, you just got your degree. We invested in you because my parents paid for my studies. And I just like, but I don't belong here. I don't want to be here. So what did I do? I packed my luggage and I went back to Toronto to live with this guy. So there was, this, and I stayed there for almost a an year and a half. And then the relationship didn't work. So Canada, Toronto, I really liked. But the thing is there, no, 1st of November, it starts snowing until 1st of April. And it's really bad. Because I remember once going skiing. I went to ski in the mountains. My hair, it got so like frozen that I did this. It broke. Can you imagine how cold that was? So it was really cold. In, in Toronto, what I also noticed, I'm talking about 20 years ago, eh? uh, more. Also, what I noticed, it was very difficult to find the real Canadians because there's so many immigrants. It's like Sao Paulo, you see, there's people from everywhere. Like, I don't know if, if I can compare to another city. Like, I can just compare to Sao Paulo. It's a big city as well. Also, something very interesting about Toronto is that because of the winter, six months in a row, eh? There's lots of uh, areas that is underground. So you go to the shopping areas, you go just out, you, you, you get out of the subway station, you, you stay underground and then you go to the shopping and then you, you go to, I'm not gonna say parks, but you go to some entertainment areas, everything underground because outside, sometimes it's minus 40 degrees. It's really cold, but I, I really like the culture as well. English is pretty much like American English. So you can just go, you know, anywhere with your language, let's say. I have uh, something in particular that I would like to share with the guys. It was when I was working, you know, I, it's funny. Just give me a second. You know how I got my first job when I was in Toronto? Okay, so I went back to this to live with this guy, right? That I was in love with. So I go there and he and he was sharing an apartment with another guy because it's very expensive to live in Toronto. Like, let's say, I don't know because I've never been to New York, but pretty much the same, like New York, Sao Paulo, everything is expensive. So these guys, we were in our twenties, you know? It was me, my boyfriend, 22 pretty much. The other guy was 23 and he had a girlfriend. So this girlfriend was coming to visit, you know? And then of course, I didn't know anybody. It was just crazy. I just went there and uh, I think it was two or three years later from the first visit. So in the first visit, I was with all these students. Everybody left. I didn't know. I didn't have anybody. You know, I was alone with my boyfriend. So, of course, I made I became friends with this girl, you know, with this. Uh, 
girlfriends of this boy. You know what I mean? So it was like two couples. So I became friends with her. And then she said, oh, let's go for a walk. I say, yes, yeah, sure. So we went for a walk. And then she says, oh, just, just, mm, wait, wait. Uh, she was just like really in this, um, like she was wondering, you know, she was like, oh, should I, uh, uh, I say, just tell me, what do you want to do? Oh, I want to go look for a job. You want to come with me? I said, why not? So we go inside this building and I got the job. I got the job with her. You know what the job was? It was a survey company and he had every single call that we made. We had to, to, to ask six questions. And I still remember to this day, the six questions. It was so funny. It was like, hello, I'm from Vacation Store. That was the name of the company. Can you imagine? I still remember because it was six questions all day long. Hello, I'm calling from vacation store. Uh, and then for I'd like to ask a couple of questions. Couple, but it was six. Eh? A couple of questions. Do you, uh, do you mind if I take a little bit of our time? And then the answer was like, oh, couple of questions. Okay, no problem. But of course, 80%, they were just going to hang up like that, you know? And then I have to call again. Then I have to try, you know? But anyhow... There was one time I called this person and the the line was really bad. So he says, huh, where are you from? And then I said, from Brazil. <laughs> he, meant, he wants to say, from which company you're calling from? And then he says, oh, oh, huh? But where are you from? I said, from Brazil. So he started to laugh. You know this. No, ma'am, I'm asking from which company you're calling. So that, that's what I mean, you know. You think you know so much, but actually you're, you're like everybody else. If you're not concentrated, you make stupid mistakes like that. So it, he was laughing, of course, but there was a simple question, but I got it wrong, you see. So I think that was a long answer, right? Yeah, and I do remember that another day uh, you joined the session with me. And I think you told us, me, Marcia, and Vanessa, that you already worked on a cruise, if I'm not wrong, right? Yes. Can you tell us this, that story? <laughs> yes. So, um, so after I went to Toronto... Me and this guy, of course, it didn't work out. We broke up and I didn't know what to do. So I was just like, oh no, I have to go back to Brazil and I'm going to have to start my life there, my career, because, you know, I studied and I had a diploma, but I didn't feel like, I I, I don't know. I was just like, it's not going to be for me. I, I cannot live there. I don't know why, but I, I was just like, what am I going to do? Because I don't have any money left. I'm traveling. I'm, I'm having fun. I'm seeing my 20s. So what am I going to do? So I, I applied. There was a guy that was really funny. It's like a coincidence. This guy that I worked with at Disney back uh, two years before, all of a sudden I got a phone call. He says, hey, what's up? let's meet I said oh for sure so what's up with you and he told me you know I just finished this job I was working on a cruise ship and I'm pretty sure you can do it I say what working on a cruise ship oh tell me about it he told me I applied and I got a job to work on a cruise ship I did waitressing so I was a waitress in the dining room um so you like to know more about how to, to work on a cruise ship is there a question yeah how so, important, how how important, important was so, english how important yeah, was english how important was english yeah yes so of course at that time my english was finally good enough so there was no problem whatsoever to get a job but it's still of course the interviews in english is not just one interview they're going to ask you a bunch of questions and you have to be really confident to, to get the job. So then I, they ask you which kind of positions you'd like to do. Of course, they, they look at your CV to see a little bit of your experience. So for instance, I remember meeting this guy from Sao Paulo as well. And he 
he kind of yes he was not famous but he was like a singer in Sao Paulo you know so he applied to be a singer on the ship and then it didn't work for him but I know that for Brazilians it's not that difficult to get a job in a cruise ship working as a waitress or as a bartender or even as a receptionist is possible. So it, it depends on what you'd like to do. But for me, I I didn't mind to be a waitress because the hours were good. You got lots of uh, tips, you know? If you do a good job, they pay you quite well. So I did that for two uh, twice and my con they work per contract. So each contract takes six months and it works seven days a week. There is no day off. You work in six months nonstop. What wow. you have is free time. So for instance, in my case, because I was working in the restaurants, I worked breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So I had to work three times a day. Each time it was pretty much three hours. So if you count, you're working every single day for almost 10 hours, you see? But it's still here and there, you have some extra time that you can go out, you can visit the uh, visit the islands. Like for me, I was so lucky in my first cruise, I visited the world. I was so lucky, I got chance to have a world cruise. So I started in the Caribbean, then we went to Hawaii, from Hawaii, we went to Australia, Vietnam, Japan, Thailand, you know, all these beautiful places. So, yeah, so I was lucky enough. Then I went home. I went back to Sao Paulo to my parents after six months, and I decided to rejoin. So I went back again for six months, and I did the Alaska, you know, Alaska in the north of America, United States. So this area in Alaska, we did like five islands in Alaska for four months and then again, two months uh, Caribbean. When I finished that, I was just like, I have to stop. It's really hard. It's really difficult to to work on a ship, you know? Because as I said, it's six, six months, seven days nonstop. Of course, you have some fun as well. There's lots of parties and only young people. So you have the experience of your life, but it's really, really tough. So I decided to go to France to learn French. So I spent uh, almost a year in France. That's why I speak French as well. But then when I was in France, I ran out of money and I was already 24. I didn't want to call my parents asking for money. So what I did, I called the cruise ship. Can I come back? And then they said, okay, you're welcome. I went back to the ship. I was working there for one week. I met my husband. And that's why I live in Belgium. You see? Yeah, really nice. Ah, really interesting. I don't have any questions, but you can ask me, Simone. Yeah, so why did you learn English? Why are you still learning English? Uh, yeah, I think it's because it's really important. It's a global language. It can help you study, work. Uh, yeah, it... Uh, it do facilitate your life, you know. Uh, it helped me a lot during my uh, university course, too. Uh, what I, did you study? Are you still studying at university or are you finished? Um, not anymore, yeah. Already finished. I was studying biology, so we had to uh, study, read a lot of articles in English. Of course, it's a really different type of language, right? It's scientific language not a uh, day-to-day -day life language right but it do helps me and i think it's really nice i think it's really important to keep in touch with the language and being here with you guys do helps me a lot and yeah i think my goal is to uh, improve just like everyone here and i'm excited i think um your project here what you are doing is really important yeah, it's trying to put us outside of our comfort zone, especially with people that are not Native Americans or native speakers. And we will have to keep focused 
on uh, how you guys speak and try to get used to how you guys speak. And yeah, just to improve. I think there was a great point what you got there because that's exactly what I want to do. You know, what I've noticed from this conversations, conversation sessions that you guys have, of course, it's great because you have to speak anyway. You have to try to communicate. And if you're just watching TV and just listening to podcasts, you're not going to speak. However, in this communication sessions that you guys have, you're just speaking with Brazilians. So it's just Brazilian among Brazilians. And you guys have pretty much the same accent. So that will not change. As Bruce is saying, conversation is confirmation. That's for sure. You have to speak. You have to open your mouth. You should not be ashamed of where you come from. You have an accent and that's it. However, Brazilians tend to use Portuguese in their English. I'm going to give an example. Sorry, Natalia. I'm going to give an example of Natalia, for instance. I say, Natalia, so I have this project. Let's go. You want to be part of it? Are you interested? And then she said, I have interest. I understand it. Maybe an American or whoever would understand it, but that's not how we speak, that's not the right way to say it because you're speaking Brazilian. You're saying, I have interest. You know what I mean? That's Brazilian, right? Because that's how we speak. Uh, eu tenho interesse. Right? But in English, we say, I'm interested. And that's all these little things, you know? Me, for instance, I'm very bad in prepositions. I don't know if I have to say it depends on, it depends of, uh, Angela, you, you, you can you can participate now. Give us a tip. We have to get good on this it depends. What, what's the right way to say it? It depends on. Oh, you see? I was going to say it depends off. It's and because it's what we were saying before. Mm -hmm. Brazilians tend to translate the way they speak Portuguese. Like you said, they use a lot of verb to have. Brazilians are very possessive. They have age, they have hunger, they have everything. It's like they put their pockets and take away with them. So they have to understand how to use the verb to be instead of to have, or there is, there are, instead of to have. Tenho uma loja na rua. The, the street has a shop, you know? We have to stop thinking, like you said, in Portuguese and start thinking in English, absorb the English way of saying the same thing. There, there is go. a shop on the street. So thank you, Angela, wow. for your participation. It's very important. And that's, that's my point, you know, guys? That's why I would like to offer you this, because if... It's a good thing to talk, to have a conversation, but it's not the way to improve it because we are speaking among each other, among, yeah, among each other, right? We are just speaking with each other among the Brazilian group community and we're making mistakes after mistakes and we are not improving, you know? So that's the thing. I'm not perfect English speaker, for sure not. As I said, I struggle with preposition a lot. But it's not going to stop me to improve or to speak. And it's everything that I want for you guys as well. Okay, I just shared with you my life story. You know, I know I'm lucky. Not everybody has this opportunity. But it doesn't mean that you just have to say, oh, I cannot go anywhere. Oh, I cannot afford this. Oh, I cannot do that. That you cannot improve. It is not true. You know what I mean? You can do it. And if I can help, I'll be there for you. So that's why next week, my, my husband will be joining us. I'm so curious to see if you guys can understand him. Because he has a thick Dutch accent when he speaks English. You see, he, he's been speaking English everything. He's a child because in here, in, in Belgium, the, uh, Netherlands, 
all these Scandinavian countries, children are pretty much bilingual. So they have no problem whatsoever to communicate, but they have big accents and they do the same thing as Brazilians do. They use some expressions and they use some words from their na uh, native language, you see? Of course, I'm not gonna just bring people from Canada, you know? I told you guys I'm gonna be bringing people from my past. Of course, there will be Canadians, Americans, uh, but I don't wanna do much of those. I don't wanna bring the all, uh, only Americans and Canadians. I wanna show you guys different cultures, different countries, but these people like me, they've been speaking English forever. So pretty much everything should be understood, but I'm very curious because they're gonna use some more expressions that you guys never. So that's gonna be very, very exciting. Um, we're almost finished with the hour. So I'm gonna stop with these three special guests, let's say. Let's just open up a little bit. Mateus had a question, I'm gonna answer. So let's put all the mics on, back on. And I would like you guys to just talk to me, give me some feedback, what you thought about the session, if you think it's gonna be something that's gonna work, uh, if, if, if you want me to change anything. So let's go. Hello, Simone, may I speak now? Yes, yeah, please. Oh, Simone, it was a pleasure to, to hear you, to understand that even a person living abroad for years, having different experiences uh, with English and another language, you still struggle with it, just like just like we do. So it, uh, it makes us it makes us feel not better, but it's uh, it it gives us some comfort, you know. That's the point. But what was your question, Matthews? I, I I lost the question. You had a question. I I asked you something that uh, also bothers me. Uh, I asked you. Let me read for you. Uh, after all this time living abroad, is there something it's so hard for you to understand or to communicate effectively? Oh yes. It's because um, I I struggle a lot with movies. I understand a lot of English uh, YouTube videos, podcasts, but movies I can't get the movie. How about you? I didn't get it. What, what movies? Movies. Ah, you with struggle movies. Understanding you, movies. Ah, movies. Yes, but you know why? Because most of the movies, especially nowadays, and especially with Netflix, which is great, they're coming out of this Hollywood comfort zone. Because when we we were younger, all the movies were made in Hollywood, so they had kind of the same accent here and there. You had some some. Uh, Cowboy movies that they spoke a little bit different. I think Van der Lee is going to be able to help us out with that one or Bruce. Mm -hmm. And it's true. But now they are going, they're filming in Seattle, in New York, in Texas. They're, they're filming everywhere. And they're not that strict anymore with this standard English that we were used to. Like the British are also getting very strong. You know, they have this serious on Netflix of uh, the Queen of England, but all, all these other things. And people, of course, if, you're, if you don't have the, if you, you, you didn't have the opportunity to, to hear these accents and they speak fast, you're gonna get lost, that's for sure. So that's just keep going, try. And you know what to do? When you watch a movie, you just put the subtitles on. You, you leave it in English, you put the subtitle so you can read the words and then you pause it and you try to repeat it. It's not easy, that's for sure, but you just try to repeat it. And like, like the worst thing for me to hear you guys say is butch, butchy, or, or I don't know how you say it, but it, it's something that is like when you start my first class, that's the first thing I'm going to teach you guys. Because this butchy or, is that right? Do you understand what the, I mean? The I at yeah. the end of a consonant. Or, uh, that's, sorry. I, I, very hard. I don't very know how hard. to say that. But... No, Brazilians, they tend to finish 
the words with I. They are unable to say a mute consonant, vowel sounds, yes. Yeah. My husband, you know, like, he, you say like butchy, butchy, uh, da, da, da. you know, sorry. <laughs> so, yeah, for sure. We're going to definitely start right away to work on that. Facebooky, um, Internet I don't know, all these words, it's, uh, we can change it. We cannot change everything, but those words will be changed very soon. Believe me. Okay, so some people who didn't talk, but you guys would like to say something or ask me anything, just go ahead, please. Oh, Simone, hello. Uh, I want to understand what is the, the purpose of this meeting? Will be every Friday, one hour. Uh, what's the purpose for English Brazil? Uh, for instance, we have a problem. Some some uh, classes, conversation sessions, just one person or any person participating. I guess the main and the main uh, uh, goal is how to improve the amount of students. Okay, well, what do you have uh, to 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 tell about this? Great, great question. There is definitely something that I'd like to discuss with you guys. For me. Personally, I just want to help and as fast as possible. I'm not going to, I don't want to be working. I could say, you know what, Bruce, just give me some money. Oh, who is the hottie back there? Whoa. <laughs> oh, it's my son. Excuse me. <laughs> no, so. Hot, I just, hot I, today you know, in Curitiba. It's a hot day there. Oh, that's good to hear. Here is not that great. It was raining just a couple of hours ago. Anyhow, so I could just say, you know, I'm going to give private lessons. I'm just going to make some money out of it. And I, I live here, but I can do it online. No, that's not a purpose at all. As I told you guys, you guys just heard my story, right? I feel very lucky. And I live in Belgium now. I have a full-time job. I have an income. I have a husband. We are fine. Why? So I don't need that much money at the moment. And I have time. So the purpose is, first of all, to help you guys, to improve your English and to get more confidence in your work. Then, at the same time, I was wondering if you guys would like me to bring you some culture as well with different accents, just not Brazilian, as I told you. You're just speaking Portuguese almost every day, but only with Brazilians. And the chances that your English is going to improve, it's very low. Just by just by this conversation session you can of course like i told you Walter, you can listen to podcasts you can try to start talking to yourself to improve like your thinking you can watch uh, movies you can start reading books but speaking wise is going to be very difficult so that's why i was wondering what what can we do like how about friday nine o'clock 10 o'clock your time. I, I'm off, so I'm not working on Fridays. So I can do this. I can come here. We're going to sit together. You're going to come up with some things that you guys hate or that you guys struggle with or that you guys don't understand. And we're going to have conversations. The only thing. that if we get a Simone, Simone you, like you, you, your voice is broken your voice is broken there for about two, about 10 seconds oh sorry so repeat look. please okay guys look it's nine it was nine people today right attending I don't know if nine people it's going to be good or if it's going to be too much for one hour so that's the thing. We have to discuss this. You guys have to tell me. Let's split in three, three, six, six, 
how how can we do this you know so that's one thing what can i do to help you can say okay let's let's talk about expressions let's talk about accents let's talk about this business let you have to tell me because i don't know what you want to do because i told you guys about this abc levels you see so there's grammar, there is pronunciation, there is expression. There's so many things that we can approach at the moment. So I don't know. You guys have to tell me what to do or how it'd like to, to go further. You know what I mean? And then there is this project. There's something different. I think I'm going to do it on a Saturdays with this uh, special guests. Like not Fridays, but Saturdays, because then most of you are off as well. You have some time. So on a, on a Saturday, I'm going to bring some people and they, they're going to they're gonna come and talk to you guys like the way we, we just did. What do you guys think? A good idea, but for me, Saturdays is not a good day. Okay, in the morning, in the morning for me is, okay, okay, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock in the morning, 9 o'clock. But at night or in the afternoon for me is not possible or Saturdays. We uh, maybe you can have a session Saturday or another one in the weekdays. That's right. Uh, I'm I'm all ears. You guys have to tell me what you guys would like to do. How big can can the group be? Could we do it like this? Because that's why you see, I talk to three people, and one hour is just like that. I cannot bring people to talk to you guys. And everybody's going to have an open mic. Everybody's going to ask questions. It's not going to work. So it has to be a smaller group. Hello, so hello. that's why we're going to... Hi, Leandro. Hello, hello. Good morning. Good morning. So what are you proposing? Like to give you to give a class or conversation session? I that's think at the, beginning, at the beginning, I think we should start the sessions, you know, like just talking and then you guys come and you say, I'm struggling with this. I'm not feeling well with that. So how how can we improve? I think that's going to be the best way to go mm -hmm. at the beginning. And then maybe we're going to start to splitting. You know, some people, they're going to think it's more important to, to go on grammar, to start reading. And then I can help out with, okay, try to work first in your breathing, try to get that word better. Or, you know, it all depends on what you guys want. Yeah, I what I, I try to do on my conversation sessions is to give something new, right? Expressions or something related to learn something new, right? Not only the, the conversation itself. But of course, like we can practice speaking, but learn something new. Always try to bring something. That's so, a, yeah. That's all up to you, you know. If you say, okay, let's let's have a meeting, let's have a conversation session, and then let's talk about I don't know Disney because I work there. So if you guys are interested, I'm gonna talk one hour about Disney. If you guys want to talk about Belgium because I live here, okay, let's talk one hour about Belgium. It's all up to you. I don't know how I can help, but I can definitely help somehow. Everybody has different goals. Everybody wants yeah, could to be could, could be interesting, like maybe vocabulary that you have learned locally or you know, express new expression that you have learned there in Belgium that's different from uh US, for example. Right, could be interesting. You know, I'm I'm open to it, you know. So like Carlos, he said, okay. Fridays are perfect for me, but Saturdays, it's not going to work. However, there are some people who work during the week and they prefer the Saturdays. So I can do two sessions, Fridays and Saturdays. I don't know. So that's why I, I need you guys to tell me. I need the feedback. I need to hear. Okay, Simone, today we talked. Only three people were allowed to talk, to interact. I didn't like that because I'm going to just sit there for an hour and I'm not participating. For me, it's just a waste of time. Maybe some people are going to say that. I don't know. So that's why you have to tell me how you felt. However, next week when my husband's going to sit here, Ludmila, Zev Walter, and Natalia, they will not speak. It will be one of you guys, of course. 
And that's how I think it can help. Uh, it can work. And I, that's why I was thinking about three times, three sessions. Every time somebody else is going to speak. And you have to be patient and concentrated in this session that you didn't participate. But, but again, we are talking, Leandro, we are talking about two different things here. One mm -hmm. is the project that I'm going to bring international people to the table. And one is just me with you guys somehow. You, you understand that? The two different projects, two mm -hmm. different directions. One is just talk, just, okay. I didn't understand because he's speaking Dutch, English. This, this one is speaking Japanese, English, or I don't know. I told you I know people from everywhere. So they, they will come, believe me. But they speak diff very different than you guys. That's for sure. Like, like now, uh, Mateus, he was saying movie or something. Like, I didn't understand, but but someone, Angela, understood. You know what I mean? Because she's used to teach Brazilians, so she can hear that when someone says say something. But maybe I'm not gonna understand either. So we're gonna have to help each other when the, the special guests are coming. They never heard the Brazilian talking. You never heard uh, Japanese talking English. So that's gonna be really exciting. I'm very curious to see how you guys are gonna, are gonna cope with that. And then there's the other sessions. There's gonna be just me sitting here helping you guys. So you're gonna come up, mm -hmm. let's say you come back Simone. on a Friday. Yes, Ricardo. I have a suggestion. Yes. Uh, you can join the conversation sessions once in a while and help us with the I've been students. doing that for two weeks already, but I'm yeah. not doing the whole uh, time. You know, I'm not staying there mm -hmm. for one hour. But if the, but if it's something that that you... that helps that helps. Okay, uh, I can do that. I as think well. it's a good idea. But you know, as um... because we already had a, a person like his name is Jeff. He's an English teacher, he's a fluent guy, and shows up once in a while in the in the, in the sessions. So he helps uh, people, not only what only us, the hosts, but every everyone. So that's important. If you wanna, if you wanna help, you can help the students also because they have a lot of struggles, and sometimes you can see something that we are not seeing. That's definitely something that I'm gonna take into into consideration. However, I think that the best way to start is with you guys first. And then when I, when you guys also going to tell me, oh, you know, I feel much more confidence is going better. We have more students, things are flowing. And then I say, okay, so let's change the direction a little bit, you know, because I, for me, I have Wednesdays and Fridays off at the moment and I have the weekends, but the other day, like Ricardo, your sessions are in the evening, 6.30, 7.30 or something like yeah. that. Yeah. But for me, I'm sleeping at that time, you know? So that's yeah, the thing as well. We have to be careful with the time difference. At the moment, it's four hours. So yeah. sometimes I can do it, but I'm not going to do it every day. You know, I'm, I cannot stay up every evening to help you guys. So that's why I was wondering, like, maybe it's better to go apart only with the host teachers to get going and then we start with the students. But when I start with the students as well, if you're more confident, if you're doing a better job and feeling good, maybe these questions, this suggestion is gonna go less and less to importance. You know what I mean? It's gonna be less and less this kind of feeling, oh, the students, they wanna know this, they wanna know that, we don't know how to answer. Maybe you know the answer by then because you you improve your your knowledge, you improve your English as well. Yeah, but you it's see, not that I 
it's not that we don't know how to handle them, but uh, maybe you can have a different perspective. Yes, so that's help. for sure, because I'm not living in Brazil for so long, and I yeah. think differently. That's for sure. That's definitely it's going to be something that is going to be different, my approach and the way I see things. That's for sure. Okay, that's a good suggestion. Um, we're going to have to talk privately about this. You tell me, for instance, which day you think more. Because what I noticed, the host, they have almost the same students, right? Or not? It's always something different, someone different. Yeah, usually it's the same. Right, there you go. Every okay. week. And lately, I have seen new new uh, friends kind of showing up, new students showing up. Yeah, because Locking you're covering for everybody, Leandro. So that's yeah. why you're doing other hours. And you no, see no, no, but, 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 <laughs> but I I usually know everyone. So uh, yesterday, for example, I met new new students. You know, that's cool. So that's they, really yeah. cool. I also, I, I, I've been doing a little, uh, I'm checking, uh, I've been to Lutvila sessions a couple of times, Carlos, Zavalter, Leandro, I also was in one of yours, Ricardo, I started a little bit and I stopped because it was too late for me, so I'm doing this quite often, and here and there, do you remember Lutvila, this thing that we talked about, about somebody asking something and then it's difficult to translate just like that. Maybe for me, it was it was not easy either, but these things come up and they will be coming up all the time. And it's good for you because you're improving as well, you know? So, I mean, we have we still have to, to talk and then see what we're gonna do to, to come together to, to see what 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 we can do to improve and for me it's going to be great as well because i've been living abroad for so long and i don't speak portuguese every day at all actually sometimes i i'm in touch with my family via whatsapp we just type just writing so i'm not speaking the language and here and there we can just talk it doesn't have to be english all the time you know i mean if you want I don't mind. For me, it's sometimes easier because in Portuguese, I sometimes I have to search for words, to be honest. So, but we can we can switch to Portuguese anytime. No problem. Okay, okay, good morning. The hosts once in a while talk about uh, the struggles we are facing. Yeah, I think it would be cool to have once a week a meeting, you know, so you guys can, mm. can you just like come in, share your, your thoughts, just pour your heart a little bit as well, because there's some people they come, maybe they're not in a good mood or they don't bring a good atmosphere into the session. Then it can also alert us about some students. I don't know, maybe some sessions are not that great. Some sessions are a little boring maybe i don't know because it's just with one person so we can try every week to come together and try to improve the way we are doing things get more students they have to be happy I, we can do some customer service as well i can call some people you know like oh how are we gonna do this are you, are you enjoying the sessions with Ricardo or with Leandro? Is there anything that we can do to, to make you happier so that you can ask some friends to join? So that's why we're going to have to start from zero. You know, like now we're just in the start phase. Every week something's going to come up and we have new ideas and we're going to go from there. Carlos, you wanted to say something, right? Oh, uh, I wish that the English Brazil will be a success, but I guess it's important to advertise, okay, to spread the idea. Okay, there is a, a website uh, called Kiki English, Kiki English. They are not from England. They are not from the United States. They are from Philippines, okay? And they have thousands of students because they spread everywhere. Okay, I said once that uh, the planet Earth, we have 8 billion people or 80 billion and a half. This can be students in English Brazil. Okay, why not to have uh, international students from India, from China, from everywhere? For okay? sure. 
And I guess, I guess we have this good idea, but a very, very, uh, the amount of students is very low. We need to, to have more students. And then the business can survive, okay? But that's that's what that's also my point, you know. Like, okay, for you guys, you are the teachers, you are the responsibility at the moment, right? But then what I'm talking about is my brother, he used to take lessons with with you guys. I don't know if you know him, but his feedback was I'm gonna quit English Brazil because everybody speaks wrong i'm not improving nobody knows english even the hosts even the teachers they're not helping me at all so that was his feedback and he quits he told mm. me oh everybody has a thick accent and then they don't know expressions you're on mute you're on mute your microphone no no she's not mute Oh, I'm, I'm, I can I can hear Simone. Maybe connection, Leandro. But you know what I mean. That was his feedback, and he he joined the English Brazil for three months, and he says, so "Oh, who, no, who's your brother? Who, uh, brother? What's his name? Thiago Dantas. Thiago Dantas. Mm, no, it's not one of my 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 students. So I'm glad to hear because <laughs> the feedback I'm, I'm was not, I'm not, not saying good. That, I'm not saying that to anybody in specific. So, I'm just so, saying, but, mm. you know, you guys know as well, us mm. Brazilians, we are just amazed with Americans. And every time we get some somebody else, like, as I told you, if I bring someone from Poland, you're going to say, oh my gosh, that was weird. Even mm. if he speaks English better than, than Bruce, you know what I mean? Mm. He's been studying English like crazy then for his whole life. But he has this Polish accent. And mm. then we take him for granted. That's how mm. it is. And my brother, he's been to America many times. And he thinks mm. like, oh, oh, you know what I mean? Oh, mm. these Brazilians, they, they want to teach us, but they never been abroad. Or they don't they speak with mm. Brazilian accent. So he has this attitude. I'm not saying all oh, the students are like that, but I know lots of Brazilians, they have this misconception. Yeah, I think for beginners, English Brazil is a very good place. Yeah. Not Maybe not for your brother that's already good at English. Maybe he should try other other. Or, or talk to you or something else. But... Okay. And the, uh, Ricardo, nowadays, nowadays, mm -hmm. if you go online, there are several uh, applic application apps. You can have English conversation for yeah, free. Yeah, I know. For instance, a Clubhouse is free. Yeah. Tending is free. You don't pay nothing. Yeah. Okay. And I guess, uh, but uh, in English, Brazil it must be different, must be a uh, maybe an uh, environment for learning different, okay? Mm. And then we can have more people here. Okay? Because uh, as I said, some people they say, oh, I'll go to Tandem for free. I can go there every day, no, no payments, or I have a premium 